Hello there, everyone, and welcome to Game Points episode 249, your weekly little get together where we talk about recent gaming news. I'm, as always, your host, Stephen Brown, and joining me today is. I'm David. Tonight, David stonks. <laughs> the internet also got mad at Microsoft, and people are far too damn horny for a really tall video game character. But first, I want everyone here to know that this is an audience interactive podcast. So if you're watching here live at Twitch TV slash Game Points or later over at YouTube.com slash Game Points PC to join in the conversation with any questions, comments, concerns, etc. you may have, just try to keep them germane to the conversation. David, uh, I want you and the audience to know as well that where I am at is experiencing a massive windstorm at the moment. So the chances of a power outage are high. So if this cool. stream goes down, and if you're watching live, or if you're watching on YouTube and you have to see this weird jump cut, that would be wise, because power crashed at my house. So If I leave, it's just because I hung up on him. Yeah, that's probably more than likely <laughs> what that's going on there. All right, David. Yes. So you know I'm a numbers guy. I love going over things like the NPD reports and what company is doing well and who's hiring well, what. We both like numbers. We just like very different numbers. I think both of us can agree that there's also a lot of humor to this next story, however. Let's go ahead and get right into the Game Stonk topic. And Stealthy Twitchy, thank you very much. Uh, we will stay safe as well. So, GameStop, when it comes to stocks, have been experiencing a bit of a weird, funny, in my opinion, but also volatile and could potentially cost billions of dollars situation. Do you happen well, to know what's you, going you on? Can, you can roll it back a little bit, right? Okay. So... GameStop, yeah. as reported on this channel for the last like two years, has yeah. looked like it was going under. Yes. But it kept not doing it. Um, their stock value has fallen and fallen and fallen and fallen and fallen and fallen. And almost every other month, we're reading an article about how GameStop won't make it to the end of this quarter or the end of this year or the end of this whatever. Yeah. So at the beginning of the year, it was one of, if I think not the most shorted stock in the market. So which before... Before we get too far into it, do you know what a short what short selling a stock is? Yeah, it's basically betting against or betting for something to fail. Correct. They they buy stock up and are able to resell it at a profit to themselves if the stock drops. Uh, without getting into too many details of what's involved in that. Long story short, these hedge fund companies can make a lot of money by buying into a company planning for it to fail yes and then the smart money said at the start of the year that gamestop's not going to make it right because you know they haven't been profitable in a while and nobody you know goes to gamestop anymore yeah i mean who really does i i can't think of a single person i i think you and i was the last we went into a gamestop together and that's the last time either one of us had been in one and that was literally over two years ago yeah that was when okami came out for Switch. It was yeah. the last time uh, I went into I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I forgot on yes. Switch, yeah. yeah. No, I went in to find that game on Switch, and they didn't have it. And I was like, well, what good are you? And then and I then left. And left. <laughs> hey there, Imperial Dev. How you doing? So GameStop, you are correct, by the way. They were the number one short-sold stock in America, to the point where 138% of the short-selling stocks being sold... I'm sorry where the number of short selling stocks sold was 138% of the total, meaning people were selling short the stock more than there was actual stock to sell. Now, see, that's kind of uh, shenanigans. Yeah, I'd say. No, I, I would say too. To and I, th I think it's technically legal. I'm not really sure how that works. I want to preface all of this by saying neither David nor myself have any fucking idea what we're talking about when it comes to this level of financial trading at all <laughs> if we did we wouldn't be doing this show <laughs> <laughs> right uh so i want to make 100 percent certain so stealthy twitchy you're asking when do you predict the gamestop bubble will burst <laughs> i don't fucking know <laughs> so i made sure to throw out a chat <laughs> yeah. please do not listen to us. i want to make 100 percent clear to anyone watching this do not take us for financial advisors or even people who have any idea what's going on. However, I think we both like to you, read things on the internet and then tell you about them. And both you and I do enjoy enjoy a good troll, and this is a massive troll. So, GameStop stock, GameStop stock has been sort sold, sort short sold. Jesus Christ, I am not going to be able to get short, through this sold. I got you. article <laughs> without stuttering. 
for a while now because everyone predicted it was crashing. So all yeah. the short sellers saw blood in the water and were looking to make money off of this. However, short selling has one major downside. If the stock if something were to rally, if stock for goes example. up, so let me let me bust out my hands so people can watch it. So you buy at this height, the stock goes down to here. The way a short sell works is that you make this much in profit. However, if you buy here and the stock goes up because you're borrowing against other people, you owe the difference in what you bought it at compared to where it's up at. So let's use some basic numbers. I buy something for 10, it drops to five, I make five bucks profit. But if I buy something for 10 and it jumps to 100, I owe $90. Yeah, does that, does that make sense? Works. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, I am doing a very simplistic explanation of how short sellers make their money. This is like the the, the most bare bones explanation, but it should wrap your head around why this is such a clusterfuck. Yeah. So this started when GameStop announced someone joining the board of directors, uh, a guy by the name of Ryan Cohen. He was Chewy co-founder. Chewy did very well. So stocks started to rise a little bit from GameStop, and the short sellers kind of started panicking. And there was specifically this one analysis firm that was saying, you people are stupid, keep short selling GameStop, the internet doesn't know what it's talking about. And they kind of poked the internet hive a little bit. So Yeah, you can't poke the internet. Yeah, it doesn't it pokes back and sometimes really hard. There is particularly in particular this one Reddit forum uh, called Wall Street Bets. They self-describe themselves as 4chan with a Bloomberg terminal, and they're not too far off. That's a very apt description of who these people are. Just a bunch of yahoos that buy and sell stocks. They decided to wreak vengeance against short sellers and this particular hedge fund group by pumping the stock as hard as they could. Now, typically, this is considered illegal. If someone, for example, pumps stock fraudulently to drive it up and then sells it to make a quick buck, it crashes and everyone else who bought the stock gets fucked. But this just is, this isn't one person. You can't really arrest anyone for this. It's a but it's a group of random people doing it. So there's no there's a huge number of people. Yeah. So there's there. no like one target you can arrest on this. So while it's legally gray, there's not too much you could do to prevent it. Mm-hmm. The stock has shot up from I think it was like base five dollars a share. It was like seven bucks at the start of the year. Seven bucks at the start of the year. It is now at time of closing. A hundred and forty-seven dollars per share. Yep. At the time of this show, one hundred forty-seven bucks. Remember what I said earlier about how if you spend ten bucks, it shoots up a hundred. You owe ninety. That means everyone who bought this stock and back, they would have been short selling it back when it was like three or two or even a. I think it dropped as low as three bucks. You buy three dollars and something, expecting a short sell, and that would have been the middle of last year. You now owe a hundred and forty three dollars per share and they have lots yeah lots and lots uh to the point where one of the biggest short sellers a hedge fund i believe it's a hedge fund called melvin capital management had to take a had to beg essentially for 2.57 billion dollars in investment to stay afloat because they have lost 30% of their network in just a week. And that article was written back when the GameStop stock was at $70. It's even worse now. (laughs) Um, And on the chat, uh, tells you what you mentioned. It sounds like the SEC should add a clause on Flashbob stock pumping. Uh, One thing is that the stock itself was frozen like multiple times. Yeah, you can't stop it. Due to volatile trading. So they, they have like somewhat attempted to curb it but not really yeah and what's happened now is that you have your basic investors looking at how live the gamestop stocks is shooting and going fuck it i want again there's yeah, there's now there's just you know regular people that see that this number is shooting up and oh well, i'm gonna buy it now yeah i mean I'd, i'm kicking myself because i actually thought about buying game stock stock game stock game stop stock last year when it was three bucks share because i was like fuck that's toilet paper money at that point right it can't didn't, go anywhere didn't you, but didn't it up. Did your mind when Reggie joined? Didn't didn't we talk about it? Yeah, it, I, <laughs> I, it actually I did kind of think about it, and I just I just was like, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to. 
Someone oh, well. did the math. Now, you can take this or leave it for what it's worth, but apparently if the GameStop stock increases a further 17%, Melvin Capital Management ceases to exist because that is over 100% of the entire holdings of that group. Which means shit tons of people lose shit tons of money. Yes. Well, depends. Because funds like this tend not to be managed by shit tons of people. Now, I don't know specifically about Melvin, so I don't want to talk out of my ass. No, I'm not but, talking about how many people manage it because they manage other people's money. That's that's how a hedge fund works. So if yes. they lose all their money, all the people that put money into that hedge fund lose all their money. Yes. That is something that, that, is, that could definitely happen. There's a little bit of Schadenfreude here, though. Because a lot of these companies that are standing to lose billions and billions of dollars were also the same ones that get bailed out back in 2008. Uh, yeah. So the internet is kind of praising what's happening as they watch these hedge funds just implode. Additionally, hedge funds tend to be focused. Tend to be. I'm using uh, not all of them. But one of the things they do is focus on the short selling shit. Because it's one of the few things that actually produce yield at this point. Which means they are deliberately rooting for companies to crash and burn, which costs people jobs in a lot of them. Uh, this falls into that category of vulture capitalism. I'm sure you've heard that term tossed around more than a few times. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what short selling is. The other thing of note is that while this probably will still go up for a little bit, just because of, you know, everyone's jumping on the, it's like a bandwagon at this point. Yep. GameStop as a company is not worth as much as its shares. No, and that brings us to, uh, I can't remember who it was, someone in the chat said, when's the bubble going to pop? That bubble is going to pop and pop hard very soon. 100%. And a lot, if, if you're getting, if you're investing in it for the lulls, that's one thing. But if you're investing in it thinking that GameStop is a good buy, that's another thing entirely. But once again, the fuck do I know? I am, this is not financial advice. <laughs> well, I was entertained when the, Mad Money Guy mentioned that uh, GameStop should use this current time right now to to leverage their own stock price to pay off some of their debts because they got a whole bunch of them. Yeah, absolutely. They absolutely should be. But I don't know how any of that works. No, uh, I just, don't know the details of it either. I don't. I don't think they can. I don't know how legal any of this shit is. I mean, obviously it's happening, so it's totally legal. But it's just so bonkers weird. Well, I, I don't want to say obviously it's happening, thus it's legal because <laughs> a lot of shit happens that's not legal let's be honest here yeah but of uh of all the places that america has ignored making laws i don't think that the stock market is one of them you'd be surprised how regulated it actually is because when things like this happen that's 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 what i'm saying is horrible shit goes wrong it's it's pretty regulated as opposed to most other things yeah I know, I know for some people it's fast to say, oh, the stock market's unregulated and you can just rip people off left and right. It's like, eh, you usually don't know what you're talking about if you say that. But I mean, you can. It's just in yeah, a very you fancy can. way. And you usually go to jail for it if you get caught doing it. Uh, usually. I will say there are always exceptions. In this case, though, who do you go after? I mean, usually it's like the middle managers and all the people yeah. that actually made the money just move on with their lives. Because a pu this is this is a pump and dump. Uh, this is, if it was one person doing this, this would be highly illegal. I believe. I want to I want to preface everything with saying I am not an expert, but I believe it is highly illegal. But it's not one person doing it. It's just thousands of people who who are like, yeah, I got a hundred bucks spare here. Fucking pump the stock. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know really anything about the stock market, but I will say that if you bought this shit at like 10 bucks, get the fuck out. Yeah, sell now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> sell the fuck now. I wish, I wish, I, I, I really considered buying $100 back when it was 3%, because, or back when it was 3 bucks each. I, I thought about buying like $100 worth because that would be, uh, that'd be like a, uh, I don't know, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. Right. If I had done that back in the day when this was only like five bucks, I would My math could be off on that, by the way. I'm, I'm just, working math under pressure. What I'll do you think about all this, nice. David? I think it's completely ridiculous. 
Do you want? Do you want to expand on that? Do you have? Do you have? Do you think that this? Do you think it's a good thing that Melvin Capital might get fucked? Do you think it's a good thing that the little guy is rallying up against GameStop? Do you think GameStop cares? What's weird is like GameStop hasn't talked about this at all. Oh, I wouldn't. This There's is such like, a legal gray area. I wouldn't say shit. They're just hanging out. Um. I, I don't know. It's, it's like an Eve Online article. <laughs> you don't it's, want to put. You don't want any part of it, but you love to read about it. It's just the, the the internet decided for a thing to happen, and it's happening because of the power of the internet. Like when they decided to make a baseball team's walk-in theme song, the fucking Rickroll song. Hey, Buddy McBoatface. Buddy McBoatface. These these things just kind of happen. <laughs> and Chaos incarnate. At some point, it's going to crash, and I don't know how it's going to affect. Well, on its no face, matter what happens, a shit ton of people are going to lose money. Yeah, on I its don't know face, on which side, and I don't know who, but it's gonna happen. On its face, I get the shouting for it of ha ha, fuck these rich assholes. They've been making money off the demise of businesses for years. Fuck them. But you also, like you said, Melvin Capital doesn't just run this one hedge fund. They yeah, don't just if- short sell only GameStop. There are people's 401ks tied into some of this shit. That's what I'm thinking. What if what if somebody has like a retirement union that used this capital management to to manage their yeah. their pension fund? Furthermore, that would suck. What about all these people who have no idea what the fuck 4chan or Wall Street bets or anything is? They just see GameStop stock soaring and go, "I want a piece of that." Mm. Now, there is a, part of me does have a bit of the caveat emptor in me, but in this case. It's such an unusual thing. I can't really fault for people. So while it might be fun to cheer uh, predatory assholes losing their money, a lot more of other types of people are also going to potentially lose on this because there is no way the stock's staying up this high. Yeah. And people that are like regular people that just see the stock surging who are just jumping in now and Mm -hmm. buying things now because the reason it's still going up is because people are still buying it. Yeah. That's why that's happening. Yes. At some point, it'll hit a wall and it'll drop through the floor. Furthermore, this shit is expanding. It's no longer just GameStop. Oh, We're fine. seeing two other uh, short sell companies, particularly Bed Bath and Beyond, and AMC, the movie theater chain, having no, their no, stocks. No, 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 you're not talking about video games anymore. I don't care. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just saying this is starting to have consequences beyond just that. So, yeah. Uh, I, I part of me wants to kind of smile and laugh at this, but there are some people who could, like not there are some actual people who are innocent in this who can get really fucked by it. So I am really fascinated by watching this happen. I want absolutely no part in it. It's kind of like when you drive down the highway and see a train wreck, and everyone kind of wants to know what happened. I want to see the results of what happened after this, and I can guarantee you. If Melvin Capital goes boom because of it, you will have laws and regulations put in place to keep this shit from happening again. Because that's just, once you're starting to talk about affecting people who have billions and billions of dollars, and it's all gone overnight, everyone else who has billions and billions of dollars going to go, fuck that. This is never going to happen again. Prevent it from happening again. So I'll be very see, curious. When you say it like out. that, now I want the little guy to win. <laughs> the thing is, the little guy gets fucked over by this too. Like we were just yeah, saying, if right? you if you're just some penny any investor who's just like, oh, this might be a good idea, just get fucked. So, yeah, something to keep in mind. Uh, I want to know how this resolves itself. I'm sure we will touch on this again once this wild ass ride is over with. I want to wrap this up by saying, It'll probably once be more, done by next week. Honestly, yeah. I want to say once more. We are not financial investors. We have no idea what we're talking about. I could have gotten something wrong. Flat out. I don't pay attention to this stuff all that much. But since it's specifically dealing with GameStop, and it's that's a topic we have been dancing around for years at this point, I wanted to mention it. And it's also kind of funny to see suddenly uh, every like games journalist out there trying to bone up on what short selling is. <laughs> <laughs> including us uh... including us uh so yeah that's uh that's that let me know what you guys think down in the comments below or in the chat here uh 
Hey, I watched that movie that had American Psycho listening to a bunch of Metallica. I kind of know what's going on. <sighs> David, American Psycho listens to He We Lose on the News. Come on. I don't mean that movie. I mean the guy that played American Psycho listening to a bunch of Metallica. Oh, yeah. Michael Keaton. You're right. That's not that guy. George Clooney? No. Robert Pattinson? Nothing. No, 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 no. All right. David, why don't you go ahead and listen? What was that? <laughs> the Machinist? <laughs> <laughs> that, who, who, was that, who was that guy from Reign of Fire? <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's a throwback anyway uh, anyway what, what, I, I think i think we've run out of what we could talk about on this thing specifically but it is just it is fascinating and like i said fight that urge to go ha fuck these people because a lot of normal people get hurt by this shit too so let's uh move on to the next story david would you like to lead us off on this one yeah uh fun story so last friday Microsoft announced that it was going to change the price of Xbox Live Gold memberships. Um, a few, a few different changes. So one month was going up by a buck, three months was going up by five bucks, six months was going up by twenty bucks, and a whole year of Xbox Live Gold was going to be a hundred and twenty dollars, which is um, literally twice PlayStation Plus. Twice, yeah, PlayStation Plus, and quite a bit more than it was before. Uh, a lot of speculation happened that this was meant to drive people towards getting Game Pass Ultimate as opposed to paying for just Xbox Game Pass Live. And everybody got real, real mad. Like, real mad. There was... It, real mad. When you compared it specific to, like, PlayStation Plus and what else you get, and you also count the fact that free-to-play games are free everywhere else without a year subscription except Xbox, where you have to yep. have Xbox Live to even play Fortnite. Yep. Uh... The internet... And you don't get any perks. Keep in mind that the yeah. Xbox Live Gold is just for online play. That is yeah. well, all it gives you is online play on the Xbox. That's not true. There is like the games for gold, ga games with gold thing, but they tend to be they're they're not the Game Pass stuff. They're not your big big titles. Mm -hmm. But this really pissed a lot of people off because essentially that's telling people, hey, your your free to play game is now costing you a minimum one hundred and twenty bucks a year. Yeah, if if you only play like say Fortnite or anything on, and there. if anything, if you want to play games online on Xbox, it's not twice as much as it is on PlayStation. Yeah. Which My you know we were we were talking about at some point PlayStation was free and Xbox was thirty dollars, and still everybody was mad at Xbox. So right. people were extra mad about this. Now before the end of the day, uh, Microsoft changed their mind. Yeah, real quick. And I haven't seen a company backtrack this hard in a very long time. And in a statement they released, we messed up today and you were right to let us know. Connecting and playing with friends is a vital part of gaming and we failed to meet the expectations of players who count on it every day. As a result, we have decided not to change Xbox Live Gold pricing. We're turning this moment into an opportunity to bring Xbox Live more in line with how we see the player at the center of their experiences. For free to play games, you will no longer need an Xbox Live Gold membership to play those games on Xbox. We're working hard to deliver this change as soon as possible in the coming months. So they're not changing the pricing. And in addition, you can actually play free to play games for free on the Xbox ecosystem, something that should have been done a long, long time ago. Not at this point, but later in the year, they will be making that change. Uh, from what I understand, by the way, David, Microsoft was planning on making that free to begin with. Yeah, I, I feel like they already were because of the way this this came out. Um but they, just but they some probably should have though. led with that first and said, hey, guys, free-to-play games are actually free-to-play on Xbox, and then waited a few weeks and said, Xbox Live is now $120. Yes. Instead uh, of doing it backwards. I, I feel the same way. I can't... There's no evidence of it, but there's. I can't see this being any other... Any other I can't see this being done for any other reason other than to drive people to Games Pass because Microsoft is very much taking the, in my opinion, the Netflix approach to this. Well, when it, when Netflix first came out, it was extremely cheap, and you were stupid not to have it. And then over the years, they slowly started jacking up the price a dollar or two here a month. I think that Microsoft is trying to do that same thing, where they're going to try to force everyone onto Game Pass. Because Game Pass, as it is, I don't think it's profitable for Microsoft. Mm -hmm. It can't be, with how cheap it is. But what they want is to make as big of an audience as they can on it. They want to capture as much market share as they can on it. And then when they have everyone, when they have like that pseudo monopoly, and I'm loath to use the term monopoly, but when they are at maximum saturation with it, they go, okay, instead of being, how much is Game Pass now? Is it 100 bucks a year, 150 a year? I don't know. 
I, I, I don't know either. I don't have it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they start incrementally raising it up like a buck or two here and there. Mm-hmm. And start cranking it up that way. Uh, I used to know what it was off the top of my head. I think it's like 150 year for Game Pass Ultimate, but I'm not positive on that. I could be way off I on think, that, by the way. I think Ultimate is about 15 bucks a month. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I can't see why you would be increasing Xbox Live Gold except to drive people to Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And Microsoft clearly fucked up. They backed off the other, immediately on The other thought, right, is that this is an attempt to get people to stop doing the buy three years of Xbox Live Gold and then do the thing where you pay like a dollar to upgrade it to Game Pass Ultimate to get ult- Ultimate for super cheap. Then why not just it, cha- why not just stop that program from Game Pass Ultimate then? I I mean, obvious. That's that's an idea. That's bold. I don't know why <laughs> someone, but I'm just putting that out there in the right. universe. It's just speculation to see what's up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't think that this was necessarily any like. I, I'm actually going to back off what I was about to say. Never mind. All right. <laughs> I was it's, going somewhere with it, and then I realized how ludicrous it sounded and just backed off on That's it. That's a good way to end a topic. <laughs> that is a good way to end a topic. David? Yes. A lot of this show has been dedicated to the internet as if it was a sentient being. Yes, it is. And all sentient beings have a desire to biologically reproduce. And the internet took it upon itself to decide it wants to mate with the tall woman from Resident Evil 8. I don't... 100% agree with that statement, but I will allow you to continue. <laughs> all right. Uh, all of this stems from the fact that there was a big Resident Evil Direct, for lack of a better term. And they showed off a whole bunch of Resident Evil stuff. Uh, Resident Evil 8, specifically. Uh, Resident Evil 8 Village will be coming out to all consoles May 7th, so we get a release date. But specifically, what kind of caught their ire was that there was... Not ire, but attention, I should say. Was that there was a demo that dropped on PlayStation 5 called The Maiden. It's a combatless demo that lets you explore what the world of Resident Evil is going to look like. And at the end of this demo is a very giant, tall woman whom the meme smiths went wild over. Mm -hmm. And I don't get it. Tall, vampire looking lady. Very Victorian. I don't understand it. Do, do you do you understand though. do you understand this david because i don't i don't get why she specifically like just set the internet on fire i don't know i thought the witch girl was hotter the 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 uh the, the shorter dressed in black one yeah okay i think this is one of those things the reason why i bring this up is because i think i'm getting too old for the internet dude i think i've been too old for the internet <laughs> i think i've lost touch uh, I have no idea what the kids are thinking. If you can educate me, please let me know. Uh, I'm talking to chat at this point on so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're too out. Of, we're too out of the loop. But a whole bunch of Resident Evil, Resident Evil stuff dropped. Like I said, we have release date for May seventh. Uh, the main demo is out right now. They have a weird multiplayer deathmatch arena thing called Reverse, which you, you're playing all these random Resident Evil characters fighting in RPD. I. Uh, that looked bad to me, if you're asking. That me. looks horrible. Stop, stop, stop. Stop trying with the to multiplayer make stuff. A flipping deathmatch in Resident Evil. No yeah. one gives a shit. Just make another fucking outbreak, you dumb shits. Yes, agree. And uh, Resident Evil. Oh, Stupid what Capcom. was it that came with Resident Evil 3? I can't even remember what it's called anymore. That's how. Retribution. I don't know. It was something. It was the asymmetrical multiplayer. Looked really cool. I probably would have played that if it was standalone, but I didn't want to buy Resident Evil 3 just to play it because yeah. I didn't know enough people that were also going to buy Resident Evil 3 just to play it. Yeah, exactly. Stop like, that doing was, that stuff. That was neat, but I'm willing to bet if you try and get into that server, there's six other people online. So one person is always the odd man out. <laughs> so they have another game that they're trying to push with it. Uh, they say it comes for free with Resident Evil Village. Cool, but we both know that free doesn't really mean free in this. It means resources were consumed go, up from somewhere else to make that game. Go back to just giving me, like, the single-player time travel stuff. Right. I, right? Yeah. Like, uh, RE3 had it. Like, the original RE3. You mean time um, trials, right? Yeah. Code okay. Veronica had it. It had a specific name, and I can't for the life of me think of it right now. Mercenaries. Mercenaries. Thank you. Bring, just bring back mercenaries. Give us that. Let us play as the various characters in the game on different challenges that we have to complete. 
and just give us this little cool single player experience because that's why we're playing the game in the first place. Did you play we're... Resident Evil 7 at all, by the way? Um, no. no, I actually okay. haven't gotten around to it. It's on my list. I mentioned this because I was playing through the Resident Evil 8 demo, uh, the Maiden. It looks a lot like Resident Evil 7 did, which makes sense. They're both running on that RE engine. Also, no, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but the Maiden is only on PS5. It is only on PlayStation 5. There will be having a second demo released later in the year, so everyone can try it. But yeah. from my understanding, it's going to be a completely different demo. people asking me, hey, did you play the Maiden? And I said, I don't have a PS5, so no. That's right, you don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh... There will be another demo for all systems later, but it's not going to be the Maiden. The Maiden, from my understanding, is PlayStation 5 exclusive. This game feels a lot like Resident Evil 7, and it's really jarring because I played Resident Evil 7 in VR. So, mm. seeing a game that looks just like Resident Evil 7, but without the VR capability, feels like a step backwards for me. I mean, putting this in VR and giving it VR accessibility on PC would be a great idea because there's still people clamoring for RE7 in VR on PC, which I don't think will happen because I think the VR component was made in association with Sony. I don't quote don't me on that. No, but I wouldn't be surprised. Or it has some kinds of exclusivity. I I just know that it hasn't come out anywhere else in VR. So that game in VR on. was amazing, by the way. I'm really upset. I'm not. I won't say I'm upset, but uh, I am You're disappointed bummed. that this one won't have the VR capability to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how I feel about it because I was playing around to this demo. And it just didn't really, it didn't grab me. And I think that's one of the reasons why I don't get the. No, um, you the also specific it's also mentioned games. that it's it doesn't have combat, which I'm assuming it also means it doesn't have like puzzles or really any of the Resident Eviliness. It had it's a, a little. It had a little bit of the Resident Eviliness in the fact that there were some notes. Uh, I was able to pick up an item and look on, at the that's, item that's and then like find the, the item. That's like the tourist mode in Assassin's Creed. It doesn't make you feel like you're playing an Assassin's Creed. Let game. me finish. <laughs> They also had the thing where you pick up an item and you can like turn the item in your hand and sometimes you'll find another item in the item and then you can take that out and then you can turn that item and find another item in that and take that out. That's textbooks Resident Evil right there. But, but do any of those three items that you discovered have any purpose in the demo that you are playing? Uh, yes, it's what lets you get out. Okay. It, it had like that function of Resident Evil to it. The whole... Find find the key to get the box. Oh no, the box actually had a jewel in it. This jewel turns out to have another key built inside of it. Kind of bullshit that Resident Evil's known for. <laughs> so it did feel like Resident Evil. There was just you no say that point. in like such an annoying term, and I know I should sound like annoyed, but man, that's like the best part. <laughs> yeah, I I, I I love a Resident, a Resident Evil, game. Evil game is an adventure game, except for without all of the super obscure nonsense. Yeah. I, I do love a Resident Evil game. I'm not, I'm not saying that as a negative thing, but that is... And I, I, I was making stuff up in case people want to play this on their own so they're not spoiled. Well, there you go. I am looking forward to this, but not as forward to it as I was. If anything, the demo was actually anti-hype for me. Bummer. Yeah, unfortunate. We do have a little bit more extra Resident Evil news, by the way. There is a Resident Evil Cross the Division stuff happening, but Division 2 is apparently still having new content dropping for it, which is not a game that I've thought about in years, uh, a year at least at this point. Between February 2nd and the 15th, they are running a Resident Evil-themed event with various costumes that you can get for it. It looked cool in the trailer. I'm actually kind of surprised to see this weird Capcom Ubisoft collaboration. That, that The existence of the collaboration alone is more interesting to me than going back and playing the division for Resident Evil 2 shit. <laughs> That's funny. And then also we had another trailer for Infinite Darkness. This is the Resident Evil CG movie being made with or in collaboration with Netflix. This is the of the RE television-based projects, the one I'm interested in. I do I, you know their CG movies aren't bad? I mean, let me phrase that. Their CG movies are bad. But they're like bad them. in an entertaining way. They're like yeah, B dude. movie. When you went, went back when video stories used to be a thing, and you would find all the cheap knockoff videos like Transmorphers or hey, Alien dude, versus G Hunter. Jay Bloom was in the second one of those movies, and I was like, "Oh man, Spike's in it!" And then he gets eaten by a zombie, and I was like, "Oh, Spike, no!" <laughs> yeah, that's what Spike gets. This is not to be confused, however, with the live action series starring the Wesker twins. When we yeah, which I'm just already version. against. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Was there anything in this presentation that caught your eye at all that you were that you had more than just a passing interest in, or is uh, Infinite Darkness? I mean, I'm, by I'm far interested the best? in Village in the same way I'm interested in all Resident Evil games. I'll I'll get to it. 
Um, I like Resident Evil. I don't tend to play them as soon as they come out. Like, it's not my favorite franchise in the world, but I do like them, and I do get to them. So they're okay. all, like, sitting on my list. That being said, I didn't actually get to the new versions of the games yet. I was more excited for the RE2 and RE3 remakes than I was for 7 or even for 8. Because... And you haven't even played 7 yet, if I recall. No, that's what I'm saying. I haven't, I haven't played 7, but I did play some of the, the second remake. Okay. It's like I'm more play seven. Camp. Seven's actually good. And if I'm I sure, if like I said, I'll get to it. Eight really does just feel like seven point five to me, which isn't necessarily a but you know what eight feels like? Hmm. Eight feels like the seven the way Resident Evil three felt to two. Okay, that's cool. So if I end up liking seven, I'll probably like eight. Probably. There you go. All right, why don't you go ahead let's, and lead us on our next topic Let's talk about here. this other story that's um I think I'm excited about. So this one's IGN. The, uh, man, I hate this title. Hitman's developers, James Bond, won't be based on any previous actor. To translate that, IO Interactive, the ones who are making the new James Bond video game, have revealed that the protagonist in the developer's upcoming James Bond video game will not be based on any previous actor who has filled the role. And the director hinted at a trilogy. Two things, David. One. Yes. I'm glad that this is not based on so, any actual James Bond. So excited for this. Two, this is not because IO Interactive has some kind of vision. I can guarantee you it's because they couldn't afford to pay Daniel Craig or Pierce Bronson or uh, George Lazenby. See, because I refuse this, to say this, any of the good this, ones. This ruins uh, what I was going to be excited about, but I'll, I'll keep going. This news arrives as a part of an interview conducted by the Danish Broadcasting Corporation, which also talks about how the studio plans to double staff over the next few years as it works on this ambitious project. In a quote, we have been allowed to make our own digital bond, which will not lean on a bond actor. IO Interactive's director, Hakan Abrak, told the Danish Publishing Corporation. This means we won't see the likeness of Daniel Craig or Pierce Brosnan coming to the game. The character will be entirely unique and unrelated to previous bond performances. We also come up with a completely original story, and you can easily imagine that a trilogy could come out of it, Everick added. So, the reason I was originally excited for this is because there's one thing that I've wanted from the Bond universe for so, so long now, and I feel like I'm just never going to get the movie, so I, like, accidentally started throwing my hopes into the game, but for, for heaven's sake, just give me the Idris Elba Bond already. I would I would legitimately like to see Idris Elba as James Bond. I would be so excited to see that I can, happen. And I was I like, well, accept, they're not giving a movie, yeah. so screw it. Make Just put him in the video game. I don't want that in the video game, though. I want that in the movie. What I, I, want, I would you know, rather have it in the movie, but I'm still just like, now is the opportunity to actually get a new person in the Bond role. Yeah. Like, and not just use the same generic like white guy with brown haired actor that they've been using for the last 50 years i'd say I'm, I'm fine with that depending on who the actor is uh i don't care for daniel craig as bond but i love I just Go ahead. they're all the same they're all the same guy no nah, no nah, i see vast differences between them uh but I, i'm that's i'm not, it's not necessarily a debate we need to have right here i will say however pierce bronson's possibly one of the best uh, of the three newest bonds pierce bronson's the best of the old bron of the old bonds it's uh Oh my god, I forgot his name. You can't think of Sean Connery? No, Sean Connery's not. It's the guy that was in Moonraker. Uh, Roger Moore. Jesus Christ, I forgot Roger Moore's name. Roger Moore, by it's the epitome of Bond, in my opinion. Man, I'm glad you added in your opinion, because if you try to state that as fact, I would hang up on you, drag your ass, and open hand slap you in the face. <laughs> the Sean Connery, the Sean Connery <laughs> Bonds were so boring, man. Come on. Dude, so Bond should embrace the cheese. Yes, that's why Roger Moore is the best one. Because there is no Bond movie cheesier than Moonraker. And the <laughs> best Bond movie, by far, is A View to a Kill. Both of which had Roger Moore in it. Okay, while you're making good arguments, I still don't agree with you. <laughs> that's is the nature of the internet. What I want from the video game. Yes, yes, back uh, to the video game. Let's go back to the video games. I don't need to have like Pierce Bronson or Daniel Craig in the role, but I would, I do, I am all in on this original story because I think the best Bond video game was not Goldeneye, but Everything or Nothing. Goldeneye was fantastic for, for what it did for local multiplayer. Yes, I, I uh, agree on that. I one hundred percent do not want 
a third person shooter with a Bond skin on it. No. What I want is Hitman I want a spy with a Bond skin video on game. it. I don't even want Hitman. I want a spy video game. Well, that's that's why I'm excited for IO Interactive hitting on it because or making it rather. Yeah, because well, like I, I get Hitman, but I'm like I don't want the the goal of every mission to be murdering somebody. I don't so want that I either. Like take but a step back from that. Can't you easily see the transition from Hitman to a Bond yeah. game though? Yeah, yeah, this makes perfect sense to me. I I'm really looking forward to this. I hope they get a trilogy. And once again, to reiterate, let's be real here. The reason why they're not getting a known name to be Bond is because they just can't afford it. That's that's the long and the short of it. Tell you right now, they're saving millions of dollars not having to pay Daniel Craig for his likeness or anything like that. You're saying guys, just outside so, the box on this one. It just, just me, so give, happens give to new. align with my interests and your interests. It sounds like as well. Mm -hmm. David, yes, we got two more news stories coming up right here, and I don't like either one of them. <laughs> well, you go first. I'll go next because uh, you'll get too heated about the second one. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, Vicarious Visions. This is a team that most famously made Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. Uh, they don't exist anymore. They've now fully been merged into Blizzard. This is from GamesIndustry.biz. Activision Blizzard has moved its Vicarious Vision studio from the Activision side of the business to the Blizzard side. The publisher today told GameIndustry.biz that effective today it is merging Vicarious Visions into, game, into Blizzard Entertainment. Going forward, Vicarious Visions team of about 200 employees will be employees of Blizzard and, quote, fully dedicated to existing Blizzard games and initiatives, end quote, which means that the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 studio will no longer be creating games as the lead developer. David, uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake cracked the top 20 NPD numbers for 2020, but clearly that's not enough for Activision Blizzard. So nope. a game that literally sold in the top 20 of games, which was a fucking remake, Yep. Not good enough. They are essentially throwing that studio into Blizzard rather than making what people have been clamoring for a new Tony Hawk game. They, they had the bones. They did the work. Rumor could've, is. Could have could have happened. There's more to this story in my opinion if you read a little bit deeper into it. Rumor is, and this is a rumor that they are taking over development from the unannounced Diablo 2 remaster from an Eternal Blizzard team. A move that once again underscores Activision's intrusion into what once was a rather independent Blizzard. As we Man, have remember when about, Blizzard's like, oh, Activision's going to be here, but we're still doing our own thing, and then became the monster. Yeah, that literally started over the past year specifically. Activision has been establishing more and more control over Blizzard, and this is it's, another way it's of It's been the it. case since Overwatch came out, let's be real. Yeah, it, it has been the case since Overwatch came out. This is no way for them to do it, by replacing a Blizzard team with an own Activision internal team. Mm -hmm. But calling them Blizzard. Yeah, there's a reason why you had your big Blizzard names leave, like Mike Monahan and uh, other names that escaped me at this point in time. <laughs> but they, they have all bounced out. And let's not forget the current head of Blizzard is a Chinese bootlicking uh, douchebag, bag of dicks. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, we can't talk about Blizzard without the customary. official policy to always mention uh, free Hong Kong in the context of talking about Blizzard. Yes. This anyway. is upsetting on multiple rings. One, it's another loss of Blizzard autonomy. Though with what they've been producing lately, I, I don't even really consider Blizzard Blizzard anymore. Two, it's denying people the game that they actually want. People have been clamoring for Tony Hawk. I'm not even a skating guy, but I know there's demand for it. That's why you have fucking things like Skatebird getting so much goddamn attention. Three, it's once again showing how out of touch some of these video game companies. I don't want to say out of touch, but uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remaster broke the top 20, but it didn't do Call of Duty numbers. So fuck that. Give them to Blizzard. Um, there's so much wrong I can read into this story just um video games at the highest level are done by committee now yeah and that's a problem which is why you're seeing all the big names leaving yep which makes me wonder what the hell microsoft is offering people because a lot of these indie <laughs> fair enough <laughs> that's an easy one i mean that's just gonna well, shoot down exactly what i had to say <laughs> speaking but if microsoft is throwing autonomy on the money mix, then uh, that'd be cool, right? If all those studios that Microsoft that's what I was bought wondering. are still allowed to make our, make their own projects. That's what I was wondering. By the way, the hot rumor is Obsidian might be getting the uh, coder license again. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Um, in other news that also pisses you off, 
in a post what doesn't from these days clay entertainment themselves if you've no idea who clay is they're the ones who put together don't starve that's a that's a damn fun video game they are now owned by tencent the chinese mega corporation that is slowly buying up a whole lot of the video game industry um, thq has it, nothing on tencent correct in a post on their website uh one of the founders posted i want to take a moment to announce that we've agreed to deal we have agreed to a deal with tencent to purchase a majority sorry this is hard to read. I want to take a moment to announce that we have agreed to deal for Tencent to purchase a majority stake in Clay Entertainment. That's how it's written. As part of this agreement, Clay retains full autonomy of creative and operations across all aspects of the studio, including projects, talent, and more. You are right to fear Tencent. I mean, you say that all the time because you are deadly terrified of them. And unfortunately, this does not count for my prediction for the year, if anyone remembers our earlier episode, I did predict that Tencent would buy a major studio. Clay, while a rad studio, not quite big enough for this. So I, I do think not have, I do I, not have a point yet on our prediction. I think that prediction of yours is going to fall in line of like the definition of pornography kind of thing where you can't define it, but you'll know it when you see it kind of situation. Exactly. We'll, we'll know it when it happens. Yeah. Um, the, Clay is not a major studio. But they are a named studio. People know what Don't Starve is. People know yep. their art star. People, I can picture their logo in my head. That they are big enough for me to go. Oh, I, like, I know them. I like Clay. I like their games. They've made a few good ones, including um, what is it, Mark the Ninja? Did they do Mark of the Ninja? I'm pretty damn sure Clay did Mark of the Ninja. I'm almost dude. positive you're right. Yeah, I, I, it's just not something I thought about until you mentioned it. But yeah, I think yeah. you're right. That was a damn good game. It was. And I hate this now. They are owned by Tencent. Now, the thing that you are so, so scared of. I am terrified of Tencent. I am legitimately terrified of Tencent. I, th I think that they are going to be a net negative on the game. At least I can look at THQ Nordic buying up all these dead properties and smaller franchises. THQ and go, okay. Nordic is the only one that I'm giving a pass to just because they're buying like these tiny little things that had no chance of coming back to life and are giving me hope. Tencent, I think, is going to be ultimately detrimental to the industry. I, I highly think they will be detrimental to the industry. I think that they might lead to uh, massive economic problems if they I mean, keep at, gobbling up it. At this point, though, I have trouble thinking they're any worse than like EA or Activision. They could, they could probably buy EA and Activision combined and not even blink. That's how big they are. That's fair, and that's why my prediction is the way it was. But as of this moment, I think they're just as bad for the industry as those guys are. While on that topic, however, you pointed out an article to me. I was able to track it down myself. Uh, no link on here because it is all rumor and speculation, but it's from a somewhat trustworthy source. Your prediction, which was they're going to buy a major publisher, seems to be inching closer and closer because the rumor was they were looking to... Uh, Garner, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Gather up enough capital to mm -hmm. buy someone big. And by big, I mean on the lines of like EA or Take Two. Yeah. Like, they were gather they the rumor was is that they were going to gather capital, but not a small amount, like a billion dollars. Yeah. When gather capital is the phrase I was trying to find. Um, which, I yeah, would not big purchases. be surprised if that happens. And I don't want it to happen. And if they were to do it to anyone, I actually think it would be Activision Blizzard because they already have a 5% stake in Activision. And Blizzard's already in their pocket anyway. Blizzard <laughs> and Activision are trying really, really hard to bust into the Chinese market. You could see it in a lot of the games they're making. You can see it in their uh, limp-wristed response that you've seen over the years. I think the reason that that has been so weak the responses to things like the free hong kong stance and stuff like that is because they are trying to make themselves attracted attractive for 10 cent to buy them i think that is likely to happen and happen soon Man, and you companies need to stop buying that. other companies kind of sick about everything i like being owned by one place <laughs> yeah well i mean the the, the real the real fight's going to become when it's, it's going to be the cold war all over again but rather than the u.s and russia it's going to be 10 cent versus disney yep let's see how google, that google and amazon will join forces to throw down <laughs> they'll, they'll be like 
Uh, I, I don't even want to think about it because it's far more likely to happen than <laughs> I was going to get. I was about to say uh, something that was just outlandish, and I kind of stopped. And I was you like, guys know the cyberpunk genre where corporations run the world? That's it's going to be okay, wrong. because you saw how great cyberpunk was when it launched. There wasn't any problems with it at all, man. No bugs or shit. Hey there, Marathon. How you doing? Oh, man. David, anyway. uh, we have a rotating segment on here that uh, sometimes it's things to watch out for, but this week it's delays. And we have one delay coming up. Sounds like Lord of the Rings Golem, which was the Daedalic produced stealth game. Uh, it seems like they were going really hard for a, oh, what was the game? A Prince of Persia style gameplay where you play as Golem. That was supposed to be coming out this year. It has now been delayed till 2022. Full Not disclosure, really I forgot this was even a thing. Same here. Until they, they I read it. just not said anything and I wouldn't have known. Good job, guys. Uh, let's see. Chat's asking, and uh, Stealthy Twitchy specifically is asking, any thoughts on past week's Cyberpunk 2077 snafu news, particularly how their latest patch released last Friday broke the game again? I do have okay, some thoughts so, on that. Quick thing. By all means. The only reason why I didn't add that to the notes in the first place is because I wanted to see if we could actually go a week without <laughs> talking about Cyberpunk 2077. By me admitting this, obviously we failed so we could talk about it, <laughs> but I just wanted to see if it was possible because it really is our new anthem. We're just going to hammer this for like the next three months. Yeah. <laughs> David, what, let's start with you. What, do you have any particular thoughts on this patch and what came So from it? there was a big patch that came out for any of those that don't know. They had a big patch that came out mostly focused on console. It was like 15 gigs uh, for consoles. The patch on PC, I think, was like five or six gigs it was way um, smaller than i was expecting i was expecting yes, like a maybe it, 20 to 50 and it was, gig patch and it was targeting bug fixes and optimization is i think how most of the patch notes read um there wasn't like a very specific thing that was fixed it was it runs better was this is one of those it. things where i feel i don't know if this is more on me or the company itself but i feel this was the first case i've ever seen a patch be overhyped Right, uh, because you know this is the game. This is the one that's going to make it playable. No, this is the one that they had to deliver, or else they were going to get sued by a company. So that's they had to show that they are working on the problem. Uh, I won't, wouldn't expect the next patch until the absolute last possible day in February. <laughs> Additionally, <laughs> time to work on this game. I, uh, I don't know if we can fault them for this as well, but I want to add this bit of information here too. When they did the big old like state of cyberpunk address. They said, you'll get the patch 1.1 within 10 days. They waited to like 9 days and 20 hours. Yeah. So Because they, they needed that time. Because again, even now, after the game's released, the people in charge at CG Product Reg are still, still, somehow, under-anticipating how much work is going to go yeah. into fixing this game. It is, you're literally looking at a No Man's Sky level of years of development to make this what they promised. Yeah, it's going to be, before this game is anywhere close to what we were told it was going to be, it's going to be two years. I expect this time next the, year. The problem is, is that they're going to like keep putting out these roadmaps and keep promising all this stuff. And so it's not going to be next year if they keep trying to do these incremental changes every month right they need time to cook it the it's thing is the they don't have works. time to cook it though because of the impending lawsuits yep so they have to get these first two patches out for january and february but that being said back to the original question uh i think it's hilarious that they finally released a patch that was supposed to make it playable and instead broke other things and made an actual quest completely uncompletable and then had a separate blog post on a workaround fix to make it so that you could continue through the video game. So I, man, literally all the ways all to saw, screw it up. This is my favorite. I have, I have just shelved Cyberpunk for right now. I really want to play that game. The time I put into it was fun, but I just can't handle all the shit that pulls me out. So I've kind of set it aside and it's been sitting in my Steam library and kind of out of sight, out of mind. And I was scrolling through the Twitters a little while ago, and I see this patch notes thing. And then within an hour, I saw the news that was breaking saves. And I just literally shook my head, didn't bother to read the story. I just went, a oh, fucking course. And immediately mm -hmm. closed Twitter afterwards. That is, my that is my knowledge of what this bug is. 
I just kind of just saw it and went, yeah, that that that's definitely on brand right now for Cyberpunk. See, um, we've mentioned multiple times that I'm playing this game on the Xbox, and I still, like, more than anything else, more than even bug fixes, please just make the damn cars handle better. Ugh. That... The problem is, is that most of the time I turn on the Xbox, I end up playing Forza. And then if I try and jump over to playing Cyberpunk, that is impossible. <laughs> so that we've mentioned this before on the show, but I, I think it bears repeating. Even if the game fixes every single bug that's wrong with it, it's not bug fixes do not change the fact that the AI sucks. Yeah. That the crowd control and the car handling and all that is just fundamentally they, they need dull. to be sending emails to other companies and say hey how do you guys write a rudimentary driving ai system yeah none of that none of that solves the fact that some of that game is just boring as fuck and the driving specifically stands out to that it is just dull i don't i don't like driving on ice david it, drives it is going to be at least a week before cyberpunk is in a playable state at least <laughs> well at least so we can tell we talk about it again too that that during this upcoming week i need things to keep myself occupied because i'm not gonna be able to play cyberpunk so what can i play until the patch comes out no sooner than a week from now and yes well, i am technically correct of saying that <laughs> what can you play between now and next tuesday when yeah. we do this show again is that what you're asking yeah me? yeah yeah what's coming oh, okay up? Oh, I got a couple things for you. Some new releases out this week. First up on the list, Atelier Ryza 2, colon, Lost Legends and The Secret Fairy releases this week on PS5, PS4, Switch, and PC. This is a JRPG in the Atelier series uh, that I think has a game come out every three months or so. It is. It I, is. Act, we've done the math on this once. It was a couple years ago when we actually broke down, looked it up, and I think I counted 28 separate entries for this game. And it has yeah. been a couple years or a couple months at least since then. <laughs> it has been a couple years or a couple months since yeah. then. <laughs> Once again, both those statements technically true. Anyway, the story for this game takes place three years after the events of the previous game, which was called Eltier, Ryza, Ever Darkness, and The Secret Hideout. So if you played that one, here you go. You get your sequel. It depicts the reunion of Ryza and her friends who go through new encounters and goodbyes to discover a true priceless treasure. Um, people love these games. If you've never, ever heard of it, you're probably not one of those people. But if you are in the market for a JRPG, you desperately need one in your life. Uh, I've heard people really like these games, so take a look. Cyber Shadow hits PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. This looks the, cool. The... <laughs> this uh, is a pixel graphics retro platformer that for me gave me huge messenger vibes yeah the uh, world been taken over by synthetic this. life forms a desperate plea for help set shadow the sole survivor's clan on one last mission to uncover what started the path to perpetual ruin uh to, like i said 2d side scrolling ad adventure game plan as this cyber ninja guy and it, to me it looks a lot like the messenger i actually think watching the trailer of this that they used the same genesis chipset for the music and effects you know who made this no yacht club games Shovel Knight. Really? Wow. The Shovel Knight, guys. I am really looking forward to this. Yeah, this game looks rad. Uh, King Arthur Knight's Tale hits PC this week. Actually, we let, let, me, let me rephrase. Uh, I, I mean, let me correct myself, rather. I don't think Yacht Club Games made it. I think they, think published, they published it. Yeah. That's fair. But still, if they published it, it's, it's fairly trustworthy. Yeah. It, it, it's an important distinction to make, though. And it's something yep. I should have been aware of. King Arthur Nice Tale out this week on PC. We talked about this like a week ago because it was out on console. This is that turn-based tactical uh, like kind of twist on the Arthurian legend where it's got a bunch of dark fantasy tropes. So it's, you know, got a little bit of spookiness, got a little bit of like creepy, you know, the the, the darker fantasy stuff. So more, more witches and monsters than knights and horses. Um, and uh, it's, it looks pretty fun. CRPG. Yep. I like I, I like uh, tactics RPGs. For it by accident. Uh, this is also made by Neocore Games. These are the guys that did this King Arthur real time strategy game. So we mentioned this. I, I swore we talked about this game last week. Maybe I got delayed or something. I think we talked about it because it was supposed to. I think the console release was supposed to happen. I don't know. Mm, anyway, be it. or maybe this is the game I talked about last week where we couldn't actually figure out what day it was going to come out, so we decided to use it twice. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> um. Also out this week, we get a proper next-gen release. The Medium releases on Xbox Series X and S. 
Uh, I hate that they make me say that, those stupid bastards and their horrible naming conventions. Also on PC, uh, this is a Bloober Team release. Atmospheric horror game. Discover a dark mystery only a medium can solve. This is, if you recall, that old Xbox Series X showcase, the game where you have like a dual reality and it's actually trying to render in real time two different realities at the same time. So there's like the, the real world light happy time and then there's very much the... What, what are the upside Silent down? Silent Hill Otherworld kind of yeah. In fact, I believe the composer of a Silent Hill soundtrack also worked on this soundtrack as well. Not positive this game on that. looks pretty damn cool, and the reason I'm most interested in it is because it's actually like a next-gen Xbox game, yeah. as opposed to being a cross-platform, you know, old-gen game that's been upscaled. So, I'm curious. I want to see the reviews for this game. I want to see how it plays. I want to see how good it looks. This, for me, is one of the things that's actually going to give us a better idea of what this gen looks like. Uh, also done by Bloober Team. Bloober Team has made some amazing games in the past. Yep. They did Players of Fear, Observer, the newest Blair Witch game. Uh, I am a little concerned about this for some reason. I was I was looking at it like two or three days ago, and I don't know what happened, but suddenly my warning bell started screaming in my ear. Maybe it's because it comes out this week and I haven't seen anyone talking about it. Like I know reviews haven't dropped out for it yet, but... There, there's something there's something off with this and i hope i'm wrong uh, that being said i think it is safe to say i don't care who the company is or who what the video game is don't trust reviews before games are out yeah i think that's one of our, our newer mottos we got, yeah we, we have a, we, need, we need like a list right of our <laughs> mantras <laughs> maybe get that in the notes um Alicia comes out this week for ps4 xbox one switch in pc this is a 2d side-scrolling action fantasy um, you are a quest as a man called Faraday who was shipwrecked in a mysterious county of Terraphage. You have a legendary harpoon, and you and your other castaways are trying to leave this hostile country to return to your homelands. Um, looks kind of neat looking 2D side scroller. You play as this dude, you stab stuff with a spear, trying to find your shipmates, have fun, enjoy. I remember uh, seeing Ho this, I believe it was during the Devolver Digital Conference, uh, their Devolver Direct that happened most recently, I think was when I saw this. So it okay. is a Devolver published game. That alone tends to meet my seal of approval. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Tohu, I should say. PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Mac. Hey, look, Mac, you guys get video games sometimes. Casual 2D adventure game, a brand new adventure game set amongst a world of weird and wonderful fish planets. Explore beautiful environments, solve intricate puzzles, and discover the truth about a mysterious little girl and her mechanical alter ego, Cubis. The art style for this game, I think, is very much Clay Entertainment, which we were talking about earlier in the show. So it it, it has that kind of Don't Star Clay. Yeah, it, it has that Don't Star art vibe, but please follow me on this in a way less depressing manner. So less Tim Burton. Because Clay's art style, uh, specifically in Don't Starve, I always liken to Tim Burton. Yeah, I, I can see, I can see that. And like I said, this art style gives me that thought, but throw like a happier kind of paint on it. So, so get rid of some of the harsher lines, get a broader palette, get a lot more colorful, and you've got an idea of what this game looks like. Okay. Uh, Disjunction hits PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Mac. Man, what's with all these games coming out on last gen? I don't. Yeah. This is the cyberpunk game we we really deserve. 2D top-down indie stealth cyberpunk is what we have listed for what this game is. Stealth action RPG genre. set in a dystopian underworld of a 2048 New York. Experience a reactive, intertwining story of three different playable characters working to uncover unfortunate truths that will change the fate of their city forever. So looking at this game, I think it looks kind of cool. It has that top-down. It looks like the old Metal Gear games to me. Mm. Where, you're, where you're playing is there's three different characters, they have different skill sets, different abilities, and you're going through these things. The enemies actually have, like, vision cones. You have, like, gadgets and traps you can use to, to distract them or smoke bombs so you can run past them. You can knock people out. You're, And it's all set in a cyberpunk world. This game looks pretty damn cool, I think. All right. All right. Sword of the Necromancer hits PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC. This is a co-op adventure RPG. Uh, you're helping Talma save Coco using the powers of the Forbidden Sword of the Necromancer. Turn your foes into allies and reach the depths of the Necromancer's dungeon. Defeat the Guardians to gain enough soul power to bring Coco back from the dead, no matter the cost. Uh, that being said, this looks like a proper Zelda-style RPG, but with co-op. Hmm. And, I mean, you know, 2D, top-down Zelda game. Yeah, that's why I, I immediately thought, like, old-school Nintendo Legend of Zelda when you described it. Yeah, 
And that's good, because that's what I was going for. So think of that style of video game, but with co-op. I think this game looks tight. Last on my list is Monstrum 2 uh, coming out. I think it's coming out of early access or into early access this week on Steam. I could be wrong. You can tell me later. Online co-op survival horror game for two to five players. This is an asymmetrical game where you're playing as a team of four human prisoners on like these like randomly generated sea labyrinths while trying to escape a some kind of crazy monstrosity. Um, so the only goal is the monstrosity is to hunt down and kill everybody. The other players are playing a survival horror game, so it looks like it has kind of a different pacing than like Dead by Daylight, where you're where you're trying to like get different uh, items and resources to help you escape. So you know you can get a, a fire extinguisher and, and try and shoot at the monsters that can't see where you're going and all this other fun stuff. A, I think this game looks pretty fun if it takes off because as we've mentioned it on this show multiple times damn do i love asymmetrical video games there's some good ones uh they i think it's an with awesome awesome problems, concept though. and i think that i want to see that genre developed more ever since evolve man i've always been waiting for that game that's going to drag me back in dead by the i, I think's done the best but the problem Especially with dead by, to depth also the, the problem that i have with dead by daylight is that i always feel like i get it is not friendly to newcomers at all because the way the experience in that works, the way that you have to level up certain things works. I just feel like I get my ass handed to me when I play that. And I feel like I drag the team down. See, there is kind of like a matchmaking problem on some of those games because yeah. people have unlocks because obviously they want people to stick around. So they give you like abilities and unlocks and things you can get for your characters because a lot of these games are, are cheaper or have some, I don't want to say pay to win mechanics, but like, you know, it's free to play mechanic stuff that you see free to play that. mechanics in games uh, and, that you pay full price for and unlocks and, and just things that make it so your character is stronger than a normal player who's starting at level one. That was the funny thing about when Battlefront was free to play. They gained a crap ton of players last week, right? Uh, 18 million free, or, or, or not not free to play, but free on Epic rather. Yeah, ba Battlefront Star Wars Battlefront 2 is free on Epic last week and EA put out a statement saying they gained like 18 million people playing which is fun because i i did play a few rounds of that and i was like wow this game's actually pretty entertaining that game's good now. until until we hit a group of people that had actually been playing it and we just got completely and utterly decimated to the point that i turned the game off because of how <laughs> unfun it was that game uh when i first played is when it first came out i did the review for game critics on it and i remember i that's back when the star cards are big star cards are essentially these power-ups and if you get the right combination of them you were essentially fucking immortal because i remember mm -hmm. i was in a, a tie fighter and someone was floating around the millennium falcon now that's supposed to be a hero ship anyway which you can't do anything about it but this guy literally parked the millennium falcon and as a tie fighter i was right behind him firing laser after laser after laser after laser into him and it wasn't even damaging him that's just unfun yeah Anyways, that, that being said, Galactic Civilizations 3 is free this week on Epic, and that's a way better video game. Just yeah, uh, Star Trek Mike's great uh, 4X games. David, that does it for new releases, which means that also does it for the show as well. This has been Game Points episode 249, and we thank you all for showing up. Uh, if you want to participate in the chat live, you could do so Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here at Twitch TV slash Game Points. But if you can't show up live, you can also join the conversation over at YouTube.com slash Game Points PC. If you want to support the show, you know any myriad ways that streamers want. Follow to notifications turned on, bits, subscribes, likes, etc. You can join the Discord link provided down below along with all the uh, story links to everything we talked about today. You can follow the show on Twitter at GamePointsPC, myself at CapitalistPig21, and David there at PalSife underscore Satori. We'll be back next Tuesday with more game news and then intermittent streaming throughout the week as well. Until then, though, stay safe, take care, hope to see you again soon. We're out of here.